This video is a continuation of the adventures of Millicent O'Riordan and Patrick McQueen. But what I want to do with this one is um, use the Mythos cards in a different way. Because I'm intending this to be a, a haunted house kind of adventure. But I don't want it to, to turn into a dungeon bash where they just go in and beat up the monsters. So it's got to be more complicated than that. So I've prepared a deck of Mythos cards which I think might be appropriate, which contain artefacts and spells and events and things like that. So hopefully when the characters go into a new room, I will draw a card from that deck and hopefully it will suggest something that might be going on in that room. I've also got the Voyages Rory's Story Cubes again because um, they worked pretty well last time. I'm going to make some slight alterations to the Fighting Fantasy rules. I'm going to use a D10 D12 rather, instead of the 2d6 rolls, just to liven things up. I'm using specific damage dice rather than a damage chart. Uh, this will be for hand-to-hand -hand combat. And the D6 is... Uh, <laughs> I have a funny feeling that the, the guns in the last adventure weren't very powerful, and I didn't think that was very realistic. So... Um, a pistol will cause 1d6 damage. Now, before I crack on with the adventure itself, um, Millicent was inspired by her use of the spell that got rid of the hunting horror, and she's decided to put some of her experience points which she earned into the magic skill, which has earned her uh, three stamina worth of spells. So she's got look, fear and weakness. And unfortunately when you put a point into the magic skill, it takes a point off your base skill, which lowers all of your skills. So what she really needs to do now is earn 10 experience points and that we use that to add one to her main skill. The predictable plot for this adventure is that the investigators have been called in because a house has been left empty by its previous owner and the solicitors want them to uh, check the place out because it's rumoured to be haunted and has a uh, sinister past. So they need to explore every corner of the house to make sure there's nothing sinister anywhere. Now I've put these doors here to remind me that there are six rooms to explore on the ground floor and four on the top floor and all the rooms for the downstairs I've put in this pot to be drawn at random and the upstairs rooms are here which I'll put in there when they're ready to go upstairs and I'll keep track by making a map with these tiles so I remember where the rooms are. I'm also using some kind of fate tokens which I used in the last game to decide what kinds of things might be in each individual room. So now I will draw the first card, see if it gives me any idea as to what's going on in this room. A cipher. That's interesting. Now I'll draw a token from the uh, chaos bag is, oh dear, a really nasty unpleasant monster, or at least a reference to one. And I think I'll roll the story cubes to see if they're suggestive of anything, just to try and make some kind of meaning out of this room. Well, I'm going to put the story cubes to one side for the moment because they're not really giving me any ideas. As I've drawn a monster token, I will roll for a random monster because I've drawn up a chart. So uh, I didn't want this to be a kick in the door, kill the monsters kind of adventure, but we'll see how I get on. That's a seven, which is one to two zombies. That's not good. And it is two zombies. So as the zombies come shambling out of the shadows, Patrick McQueen is going to shoot at one of them. This one here, his uh, pistol skill is 12, 
and I'm not going to modify it um, because there's, they're quite close so and he hits, he doesn't fumble rolls a 1d6 for damage and that is 3 so that first zombie is down to 3 stamina points now they will move closer but Patrick McQueen will shoot again in the next turn and he he scores a 12 which I'm going to I'm going to say is a fumble it's a miss and he's dropped his gun so I think it's um Millicent O'Riordan's turn her unarmed, un unarmed combat is 9 and the zombie's unarmed combat is 6 that was zombie And the zombie wins and rolls 1d4 damage, which is a 1. So Patrick McQueen has to engage in melee combat with this zombie. His uh, unarmed combat score is 12, 17 in total. And it's far more than the zombie. So he rolls 1d4 plus 1 because of his strength bonus. And that's a 5. And that zombie is destroyed. Now this remaining one. 11. The zombie gets... Oh, that's more like it. So Millicent rolls 1d4. And that's 2 damage. So the zombie is down to four. Patrick McQueen joins in. And that is a nine. Added to his twelve. And the zombie isn't going to beat that. So he rolls one d4 plus one. That's another two, so he's down to two. Medicine attacks. and the zombie loses and is destroyed. Well the combat's going a little bit faster. I just wasn't really hoping to have any combat at all to be honest. But um, now let's try and figure out what all these clues mean. Well, I think uh, Millicent is going to roll her mythos skill of 9 or less. I changed it from mythology skill. That's a five, so she makes it, and she figures out that this design here is a sort of decryption key to some ancient language, and it seems to refer to a transporting through time and space, so you would disappear here and end up somewhere else. That's um, what I've gleaned from that anyway. So there clearly seems to be some powerful occult stuff going on. Some powerful magic involved in the house. Patrick and Millicent are going to explore this first door. I'm going to find out which room it is. It is the dining room. Let's try to get some clues as to what's happening here. Am I drawing a Mythos card? Lightning gun, I'm not sure what that's about. We'll keep that in mind for the moment. I'll draw a tile. Oh, another monster. Okay, let's see what we've got. That is two thugs. Two humans are in here. Perhaps they're trying to steal something. Let's see if the story cubes come up with anything suggestive. 
Oh dear. This looks a bit more interesting. It looks like they're trying to have a way with the silverware. So Patrick McQueen will call out a warning to them. And it looks like they're very desperate and dangerous characters. But he can't just fire off a shot at normal human beings. So we'll see what their reaction is. Use the actions dice. See if that tells us what they might be thinking. This role would suggest that they're somewhat panicked and perhaps uncomfortable with the atmosphere of the house as it is. So they're more likely to want to leg it and not get into any trouble. So I think they're going to ask the... Uh, Mm. Well, they they want to get out of the house. Let's roll the fate dice. Evens. I think they're going to um, beat a hasty retreat and say, we're very sorry, we'll turn our lives around. As Patrick McQueen is armed and uh, the investigators have bigger fish to fry, they're going to uh, let them go. And then try and understand what this room is all about. Well this certainly suggests some kind of uh, mythos activity and um, the camera and this suggests that the pictures on the wall are to do with uh, Scenes of another world and technology beyond our understanding. And uh, perhaps in here there are one or two artifacts of alien origin. Or at least uh, definitely not earthly. So that's basically the mystery of this room. I'm going to draw another room from the pot to see where this door leads. And it's the kitchen, which makes sense I suppose. Roll the uh, story cubes. See what they tell us. The only thing that seemed to make any uh, sense with the uh, kitchen and seemed appropriate was that the investigators see that there's a strange egg on the table and it looks quite unlike anything else they've ever seen, egg wise anyway. And it seems to be making noises like that and starting to hatch. So I think what they're going to do is wait to see what comes out of it. And I'm going to draw a monster card, which may or may not make sense. Oh my goodness. So somehow it's a small, deep one, and I'm going to give it the stats of a guard dog, I think, because it seems very angry, and it wants to attack the investigators, and who wouldn't? Patrick McQueen will fire his pistol, and he hits. And rolls 1d6, two points of damage to the deep one. Okay, 1 to 3 it goes for Millicent, um, 4, to, 4 to 6 it goes to Patrick, and it goes for Patrick and attacks him. So the deep one ro rolls 17. Patrick's unarmed skill is he needs a 5 or more. And he gets it. So he rolls 1d4 and adds 1, adds 2, which leaves it with 1 stamina left. And Millicent, I think, will attack. And that will give the deep one minus 1. That's 15. And Millicent does not beat that. Oh yes, she does actually. 
you know, with the minus one, she equals it, so she doesn't do the deep one any damage. Now it's Patrick McQueen's turn. The deep one rolls and adds six this time. That's a seven. Patrick McQueen can't lose that. 1d4 plus one. And the baby deep one is defeated. Well, that's more evidence of strange otherworldly goings on in the kitchen. Now we're coming to the last room on the left, which I will draw. It is the conservatory. So I shall draw a chaos token. Aha! Something positive. I'll draw another Mythos card. Oh, not so positive. That's a bit creepy. A speech machine. And I'll roll the dice again. See what we come up with. Well, if you don't know what Speech Machine is, it's used by the uh, MIGO to keep people's brains alive so that they can stay conscious. Um, <laughs> if you watch The Last Adventure, you'll know that this referred to the character Dr. Allen, who the investigators subdued and had arrested along with the other cultists. However, it would seem that the MIGO have transplanted his brain into a, sh a sleep machine, a uh, speech machine, sorry. So he is, uh, <laughs> he is able to talk to the investigators from his little metal cylinder. And um, yes, he, he will be well disposed towards them. Um, he's somewhat, somewhat regretting his actions as he was in the last adventure, and now he is a brain in a metal cylinder. He's probably reg regretting them even more. He is aware that there is some something in the house which enables people to travel through time and space, as we saw before. Um, I'm not... Hmm. It might be some kind of machine. I don't know. Some kind of strange technology we don't understand. He's okay with things currently. Um, they're going to leave him be. They've, he's given them some information. He's he's sort of okay with things. So, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to let it turn more dark than it already is. He's a brain in a jar. We'll we'll leave him to it. The investigators after they've uh, checked out the rest of the house, we'll be able to take Dr. Allen to Miskatonic University, where he will be studied by the finest minds known to science. And I'm sure he'll be just fine. Now they need to go back to the main hall through here and uh, check out the rooms on the right side of the house. And I drew the scullery, but I completely failed to film the drawing of the scullery. Never mind, it's here now. So, um... I'll draw from the cow's bag here. See what's going on. It's a mystery, this room. I'll take a Mythos card. Governmental cover up. Interesting. Now I'll roll the uh, story cubes again. And we'll see what we get. So by the looks of it, perhaps that's a book that contains a journal, perhaps it contains information about the government looking into using the strange portal that is somewhere in this house and using the technology that they find for biological research and possibly um, research into toxic weaponry and um, 
defense <laughs> and uh, sending people to this other world. So we have government involvement in this place. And the next room is the drawing room. So, draw a chaos token. And there's some kind of artifact in here. I'll draw a mythos card. That doesn't quite work, but we'll see how we get on with the dice. Now it starts to make sense. The, uh, the characters see that on the desk here is a map to an utterly alien world. It is so extraordinary that they're going to have to take a sanity check. In fact, let's say the map looks something like this. Absolutely insane. That's from Strange Frontiers. So they spy this strange map. And each one of them must now roll their sanity or less. Now Millicent's sanity is 10. I'm going to make them roll a d20. And that's a 9. Now Patrick McQueen's sanity is 14. And he manages it too. But they're each going to have to lose one sanity point. Right. Now there's just one room remaining on this floor. So they're going to check it out next. And the final room is the library. Okay. Now what on earth are they going to find in here? Check the chaos bag again. A mystery. Mythos card. Efficiophobia. Fear of success. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. And all the story cubes. Well, the only thing that really suggested to me is that the investigators here are tapping coming from one of the bookshelves and they go to investigate and I want to say that it's a copy of The Raven by, <laughs> by Edgar Allan Poe and there's an actual raven behind the book but that would be stupid so basically I've not got any idea from this I'm completely baffled. I'm going to draw another Mythos card because I can't think of anything at all. They find some car keys. Well, these, um, these videos are experiments in uh, trying to figure out how to make gothic horror work in a solo role-playing situation. And um, this one's, it's struggling a little bit uh, on this particular room especially. So um, when we move up to the upper floor in the next video, I'm going to uh, change things up a bit and add some more generative resources to give me some more ideas when I get stuck. But meanwhile, let's have another go at this room. 
see what we can come up with. Well, I tried to, um, a couple of uh, ideas from uh, Ravenloft tables, which is a PDF I have. And the first role I came up with was that the walls look momentarily splattered with blood. And the second role I tried came up with one of you uh, has the effect takes on the effects of the gaseous form spell for one turn and I can't see either of those being particularly helpful. So we're going to call this room basically a library without much in it. Um, now one last look at these story cubes and I'm not getting anything at all. I mean we could say that oh there's something about the Mantis of Madness but no I'm stuck. Can't find anything interesting about this room, so we're going to move on, and in the next video, we'll go upstairs and uh, sort out the rooms there, but also take with us uh, a, a better generative res resource for the mysteries and things like that. So we'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching.